In the previous video we talked about how Netflix butchered the books with their awful casting. In this one I would like to go through characters they've ruined. Let's start with Yennefer. I know that a lot of people don't like her in the games and in the books because of how cold she is, but I love the book version of Yennefer. First of all, I think that well-written characters don't always need to be likable. And she also has this really interesting character arc, where she's introduced as cold and calculative in The Last Wish. You of course don't like her because she's cheating on Geralt with Istred in A Shard of Ice. Then in Blood of Elves she's very strict with Ciri. But this is the point where it starts to change. At first you of course want Ciri to be with Geralt and not with this woman who's mean to her. But then they start to like each other and you start to see a different side of Yennefer. You start to suspect that her normal, very reserved and almost arrogant demeanor is just a facade that she hides her weaknesses behind. But deep down she really wants to love someone and be loved in return. And then there's this reveal of how bad her father was treating her mother and her and even the mother was beating Yennefer and pushing her aside because she eventually probably started blaming her for the husband's treatment. I personally finally understood Yennefer's previous behavior at this point. You can't help but sympathize with her. It's understandable that she's putting up a guard and this mask of a cold woman because she doesn't want to be hurt like that by the people closest to her ever again. And I think that's really good writing because it makes you reconsider your opinion on a character you didn't like before. It's kind of like with Jaime Lannister in Game of Thrones before they fucked it up in the last season and undid his entire character arc. Netflix outdid them though, because they ruined this great character arc Yennefer has in the books right at the beginning with the second episode of the show. They showed her a miserable life right away, so you would feel sorry for her and like her immediately. But it has exactly the opposite effect, because if you are forcing me to like someone, it feels artificial and it will probably make me not like that person. And most importantly, it completely lost the surprise reveal that there could actually be more to someone who seems unsympathetic at first. Now you can't reconsider your opinion on Yennefer because you already know her past and everything about her. I also think that they've tried so hard to make you feel sorry for her and made people around her almost cartoonishly mean. The short excerpt in the books from her childhood is much more powerful. I think that she was much younger during this scene, like under 10. That's a big part of what makes you feel sorry for her and understand her, because she was just an innocent child. But in the show she's played by an already adult Anya Shalotra, so she looks the same age throughout the show. And it's not like what's happening to her at the beginning is nice, but adult could probably withstand something like that way better than a child. In the show they also of course portrayed only the father as the bad one. The mother is trying to defend Yennefer at first like it is in the books, but that's all and we never see the mother beating Yennefer and treating her badly. It's just a small detail, but it's one of the many examples of how one-sided Netflix is and because of things like these people often say that Netflix is inserting their progressive politics into the story and they are right. Anyway, they also made Yennefer really fickle in the show for some reason. She decides to sacrifice her ability to have children because she wants to have power and look pretty. Then she regrets it almost immediately in the next episodes and starts to seek ways to have a child. And then in the second season when she loses her power and meets Ciri, who's supposed to be her future adopted daughter, she decides to sacrifice her to regain power again. What the fuck? She gets exactly what she wants two times, but in both cases she realizes that it wasn't worth it, so she changes her mind almost immediately and wants back what she already had. Way to strengthen the stereotype of indecisive women by incompetent writing, Netflix. Let's move on to Kahir. There might be minor spoilers, so if you haven't read the books and don't want me to spoil his character arc, skip this one. They portrayed him as this angry, choleric and impulsive guy in the show, but Kahir is actually a good soldier who can hold his temper under pressure in the books. 
When he's inside the burning streets of Sindra with his men, they almost leave him and run away because it's so dangerous. But even in this burning hell, he can still maintain his command. When he later becomes part of Geralt's Hansa and Geralt enters one of his murderous trances because he wants to kill the half-elf Shiru, Kahir is the one who is trying to be the sensible one and make him listen to reason. In the show they also made him straight up evil, but in the books he's just following orders and from all of his actions throughout the books you can see that he's honorable, just misguided. I'm really curious how they are planning to redeem him after all he's done in the show. That will have to be some good quality writing and as we all know this production is not capable of that, so it will probably be bad. Let's talk about Kalante. that's another character I love in the books. In the show they turned her into this crass and rude person. She barges into a feast covered in blood and mud, drinking beer and saying to her daughter that she sleeps around. I don't understand why Hollywood thinks that strong female characters have to act like the most toxic men. They are doing this over and over and it never works. It just makes the character annoying as hell. I think that Kalante was so respected by everyone in the books because she carried herself in a very dignified manner, like a proper royalty, and she didn't have to show off in front of her court. I bet that if Kalante from the show would enter the feast like this in front of the Kalante from the books, she would whoop her ass for it. I also think that she's overly melodramatic in the show and I just never felt anything like that from her in the books. I don't understand how Netflix can fuck up something so easy. There's so many actual strong female characters in the Witcher books, which would be like a wet dream for this notoriously progressive corporation, but they are ruining all of them because they just have to do it their own shitty way and refuse to follow the books, which are much better. Speaking of, Kalante hates elves for some reason in the show, which goes completely against the books, where it's clearly stated by Siri that she's respectful towards dryads and other elder races. Kalante is probably the most tolerant ruler from northern kingdoms in this regard, but in the show it looks like she's the most bigoted one. And why would she hate elves when her whole lineage has elven blood? Netflix makes these baffling, unnecessary changes all the time and they are just digging themselves into a deeper hole. But let's move on to Ike of Denesla. That should be the stereotypical knight in shining armor and sort of a chad, but the interesting twist is that he's bigoted. That's why he's killing all the monsters and he doesn't like mages, sorceresses and witchers, because he thinks that they are impure and all magic is heresy. He should essentially act like a space marine from Warhammer. But despite his stance on magic, he still acts morally and honorably when he saves Yennefer and Geralt in the Bounds of Reason short story, even though he doesn't like them, but when he sees a lady in peril, he's the only one who decides to help. You don't need to like him, but I think it's a pretty interesting character. And Netflix turned him into a complete joke. For kingdom and glory. For kingdom and glory! Spike! You could have been killed. A great knight must lead by example. For kingdom and glory, we know. <laughs> He's acting like a buffoon, he slays a monster that's not dangerous according to Geralt, then eats it, has diarrhea because of that and is killed while he's shitting. None of this is in the books and it was invented by Netflix and I know exactly why they did all of this to him. They saw a bigoted character so they couldn't help themselves and had to ridicule him, completely destroy his character and make him into some sort of dumb satire on toxic masculinity. And this is exactly why the Netflix show sucks, because they can't help themselves and have to insert their views of certain characters into it. If they don't like someone, they can't portray him like he is in the books and they have to make sure that he looks like a joke. And the thing is that you are not even supposed to like Ike's character in the books. Every normal person understands that. But they had to make sure he's ridiculous and unlikable the same way they were trying to make sure that people would feel sorry for Yennefer. And by turning him into an idiot, they ruined an otherwise interesting character. Speaking about the episode with Golden Dragon, that's where they introduced good old Yarpen. So how did they adapt this memorable character? I don't know why, but they turned him from this funny and sassy dwarf into a guy with anger issues who just swears all the time. Get right. He did it once, four fucking pints! Name. 
led to Korath. It's got your goat. Someone stole them a pack. Probably those fucking reavers. Yeah. Aye, well. Three days journey and only one route to the top. Leaves plenty of time for me to pet and it gruel. <laughs> well, that's fucking shite. We miss a whole motherload of fun. What about Yaskier? I wanted him to be the last character I'll go through because in the next video I will talk about how Netflix butchered relationships between certain characters and I want to start with Geralt's relationship with Yaskier. So the end of this video will hopefully fluently transition into the next one. But more on that next time. Let's focus mainly on Yaskier for now. He's one of the very few things I would actually like about the show, but only on paper, because even though Joey Beatty looks good as Yaskier and I like his singing, they turn him into a bumbling fool, who's constantly the butt of the joke, and that's just not who Yaskier is in the books. Yes, he can also be annoying at times and act dumb, but he's not a complete moron. He's usually pretty witty and even when he's annoying, he's at least funny, but in the show he's just cringy. There's points in the show where Geralt says something mean to him, which leaves Yaskier almost speechless and he can't come up with any clever comeback. You know, the Countess de Stael once said to me, the destiny is just the embodiment of the soul's desire to grow. Did you sing to her before she left? I did, actually, and she... Why? What are you implying? Oh, <laughs> we are so having this conversation. Come on, Geralt, tell me, be honest. How's my singing? It's like ordering a pie and finding it has no filling. What? You? need a nap. I mean, are you trying to hurt my feelings, Geralt? It's it's down downright indecorous of you, if I'm completely honest. It, what, 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 is, what is that? Do you really expect me to believe that Yaskier couldn't come up with anything better to counter something so pathetic like pie without a filling? Really, Netflix? There's literally a scene in the books where Yaskier and Esidaven are roasting each other just for fun, to practice clever comebacks, which are so much better than this crap. Yaskier from the books is just so much better than this loser. He's a bard, so his whole shtick is that he's good with words, yet one clumsy insult from Geralt leaves him almost speechless in the show. In A Little Sacrifice short story, Yaskier is trying to elicit what happened between Geralt and Essie Devon, but Geralt is too ashamed to admit that he embarrassed himself in front of her, and Yaskier's digging annoys him to the point that he snaps at him, but Yaskier deflects his verbal attack with ease and destroys Geralt with facts and logic, because he sees right through Geralt. So, as you can see, the book version of Yaskier would mop the floor with Geralt if he would try to compete with Yaskier verbally. Geralt is better at physical things and Yaskier is better with words. That's why there's such a fun dynamic between them and Geralt has to save Yaskier from the trouble he gets himself into. Not because he's a bumbling idiot, but because he's so good with words that people usually can't win an argument with him, which annoys them and they want to beat him up eventually. There are probably even more characters that Netflix butchered and I'm just forgetting them, but as I said in the last video, I think you get my point. The writing just sucks. I also don't want to go over things that have already been talked to death by so many other people, and it's something that everybody knows by now, like ruining Eskel's character for example. I'm doing these videos mainly because I want to highlight something that hasn't been mentioned by many people in the fandom yet. Like how they butchered Ike, for example. So that's all I have for this video. Let me know what you think about it and if Netflix ruined any of your favorite characters from the books. As I mentioned, I want to talk about how they butchered relationships between certain characters with their awful writing in the next video. So if that's something that would interest you and you are new here, subscribe so you won't miss it.